how can one know that through which everything is known? How can one know the knower? Namaste. So I'm very happy to begin the first chapter of the Sri Panchadasi. And the first chapter, let's take a look at it. The chapter title is Pratamodhyaya Tattva Viveka. So Pratama means the first, Adhyaya means chapter. And when they come together according to Sandhya, they're contracted into Pratamodhyaya. So that just means the first chapter. The real significance is in the subtitle, Tattva Vivekaha. Tattva means truth in general. And in this context, it means the ultimate truth, the truth of Brahman. And Vivekaha, of course, means discrimination. So, as we went over in the previous episode, in the summary of the topics, the first five chapters are about sat. Second five are about chit. Third five are about ananda. Sat, chit, ananda. So sat, or eternal, unconditional existence, describes the nature of Brahman as always existing, everywhere and in everything. In fact, the apparent existence of the objects in the phenomenal world are simply a reflection of the sat, the eternal existence of Brahman. So, this first chapter is going to focus on eternal existence and how to discriminate that vivekaha, distinguish it, or as it says here, differentiation how to differentiate it from phenomenal existence of the temporary objects of the world. So now let's take a look at the first verse. Namasri Shankarananda Gurupadam Bhujanmano Sri Vilasa Mahamoha Prahagra Saika Karmano Salutation to the lotus feet of my guru, Sri Shankarananda, whose only work is to destroy the monster of primal nescience together with its effect, the phenomenal universe. For proper completion and propagation of the book, the author, Vidyaranya, bows down to his teacher, Shankarananda. This shloka also gives the subject matter and the end or purpose of the book, that is to say, the identity of jiva and brahman and gaining of supreme bliss and destruction of nescience. The word shankara also means the paramatman, who is the source of all the joys in the world. Ananda is the jivatman, who is the dearest. So, shankarananda means Brahman and Pratyagatman. He is the Guru. Sri refers to special powers capable of giving the wealth desired. And what is this desired wealth? In this instance, in the context of Panchadashi, it is the complete realization of Brahman. This is the greatest wealth. This is the solution to all problems. This is that knowledge, once knowing which, there is nothing further to be known. So, when we get this knowledge, it is not by ordinary process of learning, but rather it is a process of realization, because we are already that Brahman. We are already the self. We are already that which we seek, in spiritual life. So then, why do we have to go through all the sadhana and all the learning and all the tapasya 
austerities and so on? Because our knowledge is covered by ignorance. Our existence is covered by apparent non-existence. So this is the paradox of conditioned life, that even though we, the self, are eternal, yet we appear to exist in a world of non-existence. <laughs> That's crazy. And it will drive you crazy until and unless you recognize the real nature of the self, that aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman alone. What else could we be? Because Brahman is Satchit Ananda, the source of existence, consciousness, and bliss. And not that these are separate from one another. huh? Not like Brahman is divided into these three categories, Satchit and Ananda. No, they're all one. Because eternal existence is consciousness, and consciousness is bliss. Have you ever noticed when you look at something, anything, you're looking for the bliss in it? You already assume that it exists, huh? and your consciousness has already duplicated it. But when you look at the thing, you try to understand how you can enjoy it. Isn't it? Everything is like that. Every experience in life. So, see, this is the omnipresence of Brahman. Everything we experience exists or appears to exist. And everything is reflected or made aware of in our consciousness. And finally, everything is an object of bliss, or a potential object of bliss. And we try to understand it in terms of that bliss, the happiness that it can bring to us. Now, who are we anyway? <laughs> we are the pratyag atma. Pratyag means the individual. Or actually, it means very small. <laughs> and atma, of course, means self. So we are the small self, self with a lowercase s. And Brahman is Paramatma, the supreme living being, or self with a capital S. And the salvation or the liberation of the empirical self, the individual self, the Pratyagatma, is in understanding and realizing his identity with Paramatma. Now, of course, this is non-duality. The dualists think that the Jivatma, the individual, or the Pratyagatma, the small self, is eternal. But how can the individual be eternal when he is subject to death? See, this is the paradox that drives the dualists crazy because they can't understand it. Well, they can't understand it because they're committed to duality, the eternal existence of the individual. And the individual is always going to be limited, limited in every way, limited in sat, or existence, because he has to die, limited in chit, or consciousness, because he has to be conscious through the body and mind, and limited in ananda because he cannot possess all objects of enjoyment. Isn't it? This is our experience. This is the nature of human life. So now, let's take a look at the second verse. Tatpadang buruhadvandva Sevan nirmala chetasam sukha bodhaya tattvasya viveko yang vidhiyate. This discussion about the discrimination of truth, Brahman, from untruth 
is being initiated for the easy understanding of those whose hearts have been purified by service to the pair of lotus feet of the teacher. To show the identity of Brahman of the Vedas with the Atman or the Self intuitively known to us is the object of this book. This it does by appealing to reason and experience. So this is the wonderful thing about Panchadasi. It does not present a dogmatic teaching of you are Brahman. Now shut up, sit down and realize it. <laughs> no. It presents all kinds of arguments drawn from actual experience and shows us practically how to discriminate the self, with a capital S, <laughs> from the small self, the individual self. And this it does in such a wonderful way. You can tell the author is experienced. He knows. He has the realization that he's trying to impart to you. And that's the difference between a dogmatic teaching and an experiential teaching. Experiential teaching tries to get you to have the same experience and actually become equal to the teacher, become like the teacher as far as your state of consciousness and realization. Dogmatic teaching always keeps a separation there between you and the teacher, between your state of mind and the truth. Because why? They want to keep disciples. The dualistic teachers always cover up the truth of the unity of the self and Brahman. Because once you realize that, you don't need them anymore. <laughs> you can go on your way happily, and having realized the truth, never be subject to the suffering of this world again. Once you see that, it's over. There's no more learning, no more austerity, no more sadhana. Uh, everything is clear. And knowing that reality, one is never born again in this world of misery. One becomes a jivan mukta, and at the end of this body attains complete liberation, oneness with Brahma. This is all described in the Brahma Sutra, especially in the fourth chapter. But Brahma Sutra is very difficult, especially for ordinary people who are not sadhus or who have not done austerities in the forest and all of that. Brahma Sutra is the pinnacle of wisdom, but it's more theoretical. The thing I love about this Panchadasi is that it's so practical, down to earth, realistic, and personal, because it speaks to experience. And in all the examples and all the discussions in this book, in this 15 chapters, huh, the experience is always the bottom line. So I'm looking forward to presenting this as I have enjoyed reading it and studying it so much and gotten so many insights from it that I really am looking forward to sharing it with all of you so that you can get the same benefit and then you don't need <laughs> all this learning and all this study and all the practice and austerity. You can just enjoy the non-dual nature of Brahman. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>